So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made the storage cabinet. It's a very simple design that the customer wanted. Um, sometimes that can lead to difficulties because you can't hide things in the details. But it's a very, um, it's simple enough that this is a nice DIY beginner sort of project. You don't need a lot of tools to make it. And because it is so basic, you can modify it and add detailing to it if you want to. So I had to make drawings for this customer, so I have them. I'll try and convert these into plans, but I do show you throughout the build um, the dimensions on my computer for people that want to make something like this. So as all of my builds like this start, I'm using three quarter inch ply. You can see um, I usually don't cut everything out all at once, but for this cabinet, it's pretty basic. So I'm just pulling the dimensions right off of the computer, which is one of the plus sides of spending the time making one of these designs on the computer is I could just go right to it and pull all of the dimensions and I just cut my top my base my two sides and then my two center panels I rough cut all of those pieces um, they're similar dimensions and depths the the tops are going to be six and a half the inner pieces were six uh, six at sixteen and a half the inner pieces were sixteen and a quarter and while i was here ripping down materials i also cut the the top now i had three sheets of plywood to do this because i'm planning on making a lay stand with the extra um, when i first drew this plan up and gave her the estimate i could get all of these cuts out of two sheets so that's basically what I'm starting with. You could see I have all of my pieces ripped to size. Like I said, those two dimensions were either 16 and a half or 16 and a quarter. And then once I had that, I could go and cut all of these down to, to final size. The only ones I didn't cut to final, final size are the two inner um, portions of the cabinet. One of the reasons I don't do cutlass is because, especially doing rabbits and dados, even if you're a sixteenth of an inch off from any of the measurements, then they, they kind of compound over each cut. It's just easier to build as you go. So I left those long. Um, this plywood is not the best. The veneer on this maple um, plywood, I've been complaining about this for a while, is is really thin and now the glue isn't great so you get these large pieces that just kind of peel off but it is a very nice project product to use for paint grade projects which is what this is going to be i wouldn't recommend currently buying this ply from lowe's if you're going to be staining it because it's just not the best quality and then this is these are my my pieces you can see on blue tape i wrote the dimensions if you want to build something similar to this you can kind of pause you won't need to if i eventually convert these into plans you don't need to buy them to build something like this i, I give all the dimensions so i'm going to start with my two side panels and those are going to have two dados in them one at the top and the bottom and then a groove at the back for my backer um, the reason that bottom dado is so far up from the base is because she wanted legs on the bottom. This is a large enough cabinet. I just didn't want to attach them with screw attachments. So it's going to have a, a essentially a hidden base so I could build the whole thing more structurally, but you won't be able to see it because she wanted it streamlined with, with no sort of detailing on the outer edges. So all I did was, you could see b before, um, ordering this ply, it's not always the same dimension. It's not necessarily the dimension they tell you it's going to be. It's usually anywhere from like 11, 30 seconds to 3 quarters. So I always do a test cut to make sure my dado stack is the right width before continuing. And then I could just send my pieces through. I could cut the dados on the bottom, the rabbit on the top and then I'll cut the groove on, on the back. Now you don't have to necessarily do a full top because there is gonna be another top on top of this. The reason I decided to do a full top was I had the plywood and if you piece it out into um, three inch sections, which I sometimes do at cabinets, on the inside you'll have that raw plywood edge, which I usually end up trying to cover up, but also because I have central panels, um, I just like the idea of making it a solid piece so those central panels were held in place by a solid piece of ply. So then, like I said, I'm putting that quarter inch groove on the back. Sometimes I do half inch backers for this. I thought quarter inch was more than enough because I have those partitions which will make it pretty structural. 
and I can just slide and cut that quarter inch groove on the back. I make sure to send them those panels through oppositely so one of them is going to have top side set first and the other one's going to have bottom side set first otherwise the groove will be on the same side of the panel. They'll match each other and it won't work. In order to finish uh, cutting out this cabinet, I marked where my partitions are. Like I said, the one plus side to the computer is I can just pull those numbers right off the computer, which I did. I marked them on there. And then I can measure and make sure that my central port partition is in the center. This cabinet's going to have one larger side and then a smaller side with two cubbies, but it's going to have four doors. If your partitions are not spaced out exactly right, then that means when it comes time to make the doors, because these are overlay doors, you'll have to make different sizes. So that's why it's important to make sure that um, accounting for the thickness of the ply, your compartments are all the same size, and mine were. So then I could take this to the radial arm saw. I usually decide to use the radial arm saw with the dado stack, because otherwise on my table saw, I have this pretty wide piece. This is, I think it was um, about 59 inches wide. A cancer leaving off of the saw and that could be a little bit of a dangerous cut because I don't have a, an outfeed table on the side of my saw so it's safer on the radial arm saw. You can see it won't go the entire width of the piece but it's pretty easy. I just line it up, use stop so I get identical cuts on my two pieces. I could flip them around and it's just a little bit of material I need to remove so I can just eye it and finish making those cuts. I could dry fit the carcass could see the rabbit in the back for my backer and then everything fits into place and now I can cut my two um, partitions. So you'll notice, I'll show you on the side, my top is pretty flat. The bottom of this ply, this stuff is really wonky. It bows a little bit. Just be aware of that when you're doing measurements. Um, I ended up flattening this out with a straight edge to take measurements because if you measure it from the bow, then you'll permanently have a bow on the bottom of your piece. I know people think plywood's super flat, and it can be, but this stuff isn't, and longer pieces will always have some sort of bow in them. So, um, so like I said, now you can see with my partitions in place because I took the proper measurements, now that bottom piece is, is flattened out. And then once those were in place, pretty easy. I can go and cut the backer. The backer is just basically going to be the same width as all the other pieces, the same height as the cabinet. I can cut that and put it in place. I always use a backer on stuff like this. It just um, secures the whole piece. It also makes it easier to glue it up because the backer will square everything up. Now before I glue this stuff up, I'm going to be cutting grooves for the face frame. I attach face frames in a couple different ways. The last couple projects I've done, I've kind of done an integrated rabbit to attach the face frames. For this project, I knew I had to buy a whole sheet of quarter inch ply, so I decided to do it the way I used to do it a couple years ago, which is just grooves on the front of the, the cabinet, and then I'll put splines in those grooves. I'll put identical receiving grooves in my face frame, and then I can glue the whole thing together. Like I said, a couple different ways to do it but I do like to do joinery for the face frame I just find that it's it's more stable and then I could glue this together those bottom pieces are obviously glued in place I could glue the top and then um, add the sides the last couple cabinet projects I've done have been quite large they've been built-ins so it was, this was a this is a nice size piece of furniture for my shop if I did stuff around this size all the time um, I'd be pretty happy. It's not too big and it's pretty easy to do because it's just one cabinet. You're not making multiples of the same thing. So now you can get a good idea of what those grooves on the front of the face frame look like and then I could go through and start working on the face frame. The top and the bottom face frame are a little over a two inches, they're two and a quarter, and then all the vertical partitions are going to be three quarter just to cover uh, the face of the ply. And um, like I said, these are going to have overlay doors. So I could just go and cut all that stuff. I'm leaving it long. Whenever I'm painting something, poplar is my wood of choice for face frames as a hardwood. Um, I do buy it from Lowe's. It's a little more expensive to buy it from Lowe's because it's going to come surfaced on all sides. 
but it saves me a lot of time in the shop not having to joint and plane it so the cost kind of ends up evening out it's a higher material cost but a lower labor cost and then while I was at it I cut quarter uh, three quarter inch pieces for the top as well so I wouldn't have to go back and do that when I started work on the top I could take those pieces and line them up with the edge of the cabinet make marks and um, just show you kind of what those splines look like in place this is a test groove on this front piece and then it just pops into place now the groove on these doesn't have to be centered mine isn't you just have to make sure that your offset is the same for all your pieces that's how it will it will line up and then once I had that dialed in I could send all of my pieces through so I'm just adding adding that groove. I have a dado stack in there so I could do it all at once. I could send all those pieces through. It's gonna be the same process for the wider pieces, just that offset has to be the same, so it's all on the edge there. And I could just flip it around for tops and bottoms. And all this stuff is, is, is currently oversized. And then for the splines, like I said, I'm using quarter inch ply. This quarter inch ply is usually pretty true to dimension. I've never really had an issue with it being too thin or too thick when you're buying it in a four by eight sheet. And then I could just cut those into splines. I think I did about three, uh, three quarters into the cabinet and about three eighths of an inch into the face frame. So a little over an inch of those splines where you do have the perpendicular, uh, the, the, the pieces meeting. Sometimes there's a little bit of an over, overhang. You saw I just saw that out so I could fit that spline in. And then it's just a matter of cutting the spline to size and adding those edges. Once the two edges are glued and, and, uh, and bratted into place, I'll cut the top and the bottom. The reason I do the two vertical edges first is so that you don't have edge grain on that poplar hanging out the side that you'll have to cover up. Now this bottom's pretty wide, so I decided to put a pocket hole screw in there so that when it's glued and clamped into place, I could add that pocket hole screw so I don't have to worry about it loosening over time. Um, pocket hole screws are one of those things in, in my shop at least where they're very versatile for their purposes, but I find that people try and use them for things they're not necessarily made for. I kind of blame that on how the company marks the tool as being an all-encompassing woodworking unit. But like I said, when you do need them, it can be very handy. You could see I could just um, brad this into place and then from the underside there I could put that pocket hole screw and you'll never see it because the legs especially are going to cover that hole and it, it really shores up those corners. Once all that was in place I could just go and do my, my middle verticals and same process just cutting everything as I go. At this point I'm not using the dimensions on the computer anymore. I really only use that to make the carcass. I'll kind of build as I go going forward because chances are your carcass is not going to match the plans. And then um, in the next couple of videos you'll see I'm going to be adding shelves, doors, and the base. And like I said pretty simple project that I think if you like the look of it at least you can modify it to suit your needs.